Do you follow the money or do you follow the passion? What do you do? We're going to talk about it coming up right now in the special coaching edition of the Rise to the Top podcast. And welcome, my friends, to the Rise to the Top podcast. It's your great and good friend, David St. McGraw. I'm actually hyped up on a little bit of medicine this week. We've had some bug going through the house, so if I sound coffee or weird or like I'm on drugs, it's because I'm literally on drugs. That's how we're doing. Got some amoxicillin, got all kinds of good stuff going on here today on the Rise to the Top podcast. But guess what? The show goes on. A couple weeks of sickness, not going to change a thing. So let's talk about today's episode and what we're going to be taking on today with Scott Kantner. Uh, Scott Kantner is a special guest. He's coming on for a coaching episode of the podcast, which I know you guys enjoy a lot. So Scott is stuck. He's in an interesting situation. He's an IT professional by trade. He loves teaching, wants to tap into the power of creating his own online course. I'll let him tell you about his why. He's got a really, really strong why. We've talked about that before. When creating any digital product program, really any business, you got to have that strong why. He's got a really, really good why that we're going to talk about here in the episode. But he's stuck in terms of how he wants to build his brand, what topic and what audience he wants to build his brand around. He's got it down to two. And he's got two different things and two very different paths that he can follow. And they're very different. There's pluses and minuses of both. But we're going to dive in in this coaching episode to figure out if we can find that exact perfect topic for Scott and also just the process of walking through, you know, then what to do from there. And I think you're going to learn a ton from this as well, whether you just want to listen on the sidelines, pick up some things for your own business. So without further ado, let's get at it. All right, my friends. Well, I'm joined by Scott Kantner. Scott, where are you coming from today? Up east, right? Yeah, so southeastern Pennsylvania. The closest town to me is called Hamburg. Yeah. Okay, got it. So small town. Yeah, it's small. I live rurally. I'm out in the country. We've got about seven acres. So it's not busy by any stretch. Love it. And by the way, on a side note, our connection is phenomenal. So wherever you're at, you've got great internet and great audio, which is a minor miracle. And so that's great. <laughs> so lots to talk about today. And I, I preface this before we started our conversation. I'm just coming off this illness. So if I start profusely coughing, I'm probably not dying. So don't worry about it. Do not send an ambulance to my house. I should be fine. But we've got a lot here to kind of unpack here today. And we're going to go back in background and things like that and kind of move forward because I'd like to share a lot of context before we get into the actual issue. So let's first of all talk about you, kind of who, who are you and why are you interested in online courses? All right. So my background is in, in computer science. My first computer goes way back to, gosh, late 70s, TRS-80 Model 1, if anyone remembers that. And so now you kind of know how old I am. You can do some little math on that. <laughs> but, you know, software was my love. It still is today. I mean, if you leave me alone unattended for too long, I'll be off in a corner coding something. So my career ended up being in technology. I was I had my own business for a while doing small business application software. And I worked for a bank for about nine years as a systems programmer. That bank got bought and merged out. And I ended up starting a tech company with four or five other guys. We did things like infrastructure design and installation, computer infrastructure design and installation. We had a we had a hosting business. We had a data center business for about 21 years. That was bought out about two years ago. And now I'm a CIO for a, an architectural engineering firm. So I've been around IT my whole my whole life. And as part of those 21, 30 years in there, I had to do a lot of presenting, both pre, pre-sales to help sell things. And then when things were broken afterwards to help <laughs> help people understand what, what happened and do the post-mortem and, and make things better. So I've done a lot of presenting because it was, it was a occupational hazard, you might say. It's not something I really love to do. But it's something people always came up to me and said, you do such a good job at it. And I, I never really thought too much about that, but, you know, life went on. Now, online courses, how do I swerve into that? Another thing people tell me, have told me over the years, you're a good teacher, whether it be in like a Sunday school setting or whether it be in a work setting, making complex things simple. It's just something I don't really think about it too much. It's just something I'm able to do. And, and people have pointed that out. So why the online course thing? So primarily, there's two things. I, I, I like helping people. I'd like to do it in a, in a bigger way, in a, in a larger channel. But also, I've got some pressing financial needs with my mom. Yeah, tell us, tell us a little bit about that. I know about because you sent this when you sent in a submission for the show. But tell us because I think this is very important because it's very important to have that strong why. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Exactly. So, so as of about a month ago, mom is 98. Wow. And healthy as a horse. I mean, she looks like she could go to be 108, but she has, she can't live alone. So she's an assisted living and that's a pay as you go operation here where I'm at in Pennsylvania. So, you know, writing checks for about eight, $9,000 a month. Right. Wow, that, wow. that, yeah. I mean, she doesn't have the wherewithal for me to sustain that for her. So I'm facing an unknown <laughs> future series of these checks. And I don't want to, at this stage in her life, I want to keep her, you know, in as good a situation as I can make her as comfortable and ha as happy as I can. But, you know, from, from a financial standpoint, <laughs> I've got to be able to make that go. So I'm thinking, okay, I have this need. I like to teach people. I know about online courses. Is there a match? Is there an intersection of what I can do for other people with this need I have over here with my mom? And I don't know exactly how I came across. I, I've been on your mailing list a long time. That's funny. I was gonna, that's actually my next question out of just pure curiosity, just because welcome to the world we live in today, right? Is I was going to ask you how you kind of discovered myself and create awesome online courses. I got on your email list probably the first time around with your podcast career. Oh, old school podcast, like my OG old podcast. School. Wow. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my entry on your mailing list is probably old enough to vote. <laughs> it's, uh, I've been on there a long time. So I see this and I'm thinking, hmm, I should check this out. And I went to the webinar and you know, this is, wow, this is perfect. I like to follow a formula. I like to follow an expert who's already done what I need to do. I don't like to reinvent the wheel, you know, and you obviously, obviously had the proven results and no, no one paid me to say this. <laughs> so, but no, but we're serious. But I'm thinking, you know what, if I can put together something valuable to teach people, here is the formula I need to follow. You know, I got to try something. If I don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. And I still have to keep writing these checks. So was that, was that, was that kind of, sorry, real quick. Was that kind of the, would you say the kind of boost over the goal line, if you will, to decide, you know what, I am going to actually commit to doing this, especially when someone like yourself, you've been on, for example, my email list for a long period of time, which means that you've known about online courses for a long period of time, right? Because you've been on there and you've seen it and you've heard about, it, but something it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like the gym. It's like, you could go years and years and years without working out, but then like something finally gets that spark where you finally get out there, grab the membership and hop in or hire a trainer, or go to a group class, whatever it might be. Was it the combination of kind of that struggle going on with your mom? Is that, is that really the main thing that kind of pushed you over? Do you think, or what do you think? Well, that was always there. I mean, I knew how to solve that problem one way or the other. The reason I went in the direction I went was people have told me I'm a good teacher. I've done a lot of presenting. And you. And what pushed me over the edge was that you had the formula, formula there for me. All I really had to do, it seemed to me anyway, was follow the formula. And, you know, that was my best chance. And so it gave me the confidence to step over, if you will, if I think I, I think that's what you're asking. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah, exactly. And and so I, I I'm understanding definitely understanding the context here before we get into our big issue today. Now, do you see? And again, you might not have the answer to this. Might evolve over time. Do you see this as first and foremost? Obviously, you get to use your your passions, your knowledge, your skill of teaching things like that. Obviously, to to help people. Do you see this as something that is going to be now like a side? income for you that eventually could replace full income? Do you see it as you, you'll see how it goes? Like, do you want to get to a certain, obviously, revenue goal that's going to be able to help your mom and things like that? How do you kind of view where you want to go with this right now? I want to build something that lasts because eventually the IT industry is going to get the best of me and I'm going to have to hang it up. I'm just going to be <laughs> totally burned out and, you know, want to do something else. And, and you know, I've done, I've spent a long time building, helping other people build their businesses. And I really you want to get to the point when I'm older, like my mom, <laughs> I have built something that can take care of me. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah. So I get it. It's a very strong why. Obviously, you're going to make this happen. So let's talk about kind of what the big issue is, which led us to this conversation today, because, you know, this all sounds great. But now we've got a, a very interesting crossroads that we're going to try to work through here today on the podcast. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on? Yeah, so so the situation is this. My, my original idea was around teaching people how to give a good presentation because as I was talking, that's something people would come up to me and say, hey, you do that well. So, you know, it seemed to me 
there's a good target market for that. Business pro- business professionals advance very well in their career if they can present well. If they can't stand up in front of a group of people and present, they're they're limiting themselves. So I thought, ooh, that's a good market. I know how to do this. I can help them. It's almost like it's a personal development evergreen type of market out there, and I can probably charge a decent price because people look at that as an investment in themselves. So I get the course. I went through the modules. It's it's great, by the way. And I'm starting to follow the I'm starting to follow the formula to the point where I'm doing, and I didn't quite tell you this correctly to email. What I started fleshing out was a free ebook to put on Amazon, start building a list. Because I have a list of zero. Right. But and, and it's where it's we all okay. start, by the way. It's where we all start. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> And yeah, I just couldn't stay motivated. I would work at it every day. I'd spend an hour at it and, and I doing the research for it and writing it out because, you know, I had it when you when you go to teach somebody something, then you really understand where your creepy corners and cobwebs are that you don't have filled in. So I'm doing the research to fill all that in. And I realized, you know, I'm not really an expert at this, but, you know, I'm good enough. But I don't seem to have the passion for it. This is just like drudgery. I'm just, am I just trying to bang through this? Is it just the normal that everybody goes through? Or do I have this fear that I don't really have enough to say about this over the long haul, right? I could put the course together, but what about after that? How do I keep people engaged? How do I be that person for them? I'm not sure I'm the guy to be a presenting expert. So then you came along with this five part, I think it was like a five part daily series on outline your darn course or yes, something like yes, that. Yes, outline yeah. your darn course. So I'm munching on my sandwich thinking at lunchtime, thinking, you know what? Just for fun, I'm going to do this with something else that I enjoy doing. So which is playing piano and keyboards in and particularly in a, in a worship band setting. So just for fun, I went through the thing each day for five days and I actually banged out that outline and all the stuff that you said in there probably in about 30 seconds. It just flowed right out of my head. It wasn't drudgery. I didn't hate it. I totally knew what I was talking about, and I didn't feel like I wasn't the guy. So (laughs) I tried to do the same thing then also with teaching people how to present, and it's like, here I am with the roadblock again. I'm having the mental blocks. It's not – it's just not flowing. So I come to this point where – I I feel like, okay, this is natural, but I don't – I didn't see a market for the keyboard thing. It's like I don't – and I could be completely wrong about that, but I just didn't sense that the opportunity was going to be big enough. So I, as I closed that email out with you, my, my vexing question is, do I follow my passion and hold – or do I hold my nose and follow what I be, where I believe the money is? Again, I care about teaching people either way I go here, but – I only have so much time in a day because I have a day job. I have to do this on nights and weekends, and I don't want to go down the wrong road and and have found I've wasted my time. Got it. And so let, let me just summarize here real quick so that make sure and, – and you said it very clearly, but just make sure I understand, make sure everyone that's listening understands. So basically, we've got this, ca- this like age-old question, right? We've got something here where – You know, you're good at it. You know how to do it. You're not all that passionate about it. You view that that market might be better in terms of there might be more people interested in buying it at higher price points in that market, which is the presentations, right? Correct. Then you have this other one that you love. You're very passionate about it. Stuff just flows. It comes out, but you're worried that there might not be a market for that. Is that what we're kind of worried about? Okay. So first of all, what do you think I'm going to say? Just curious. I think you're going to tell me to follow the passion. Yeah, I mean, well, so first of all, let, let's 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 kind of instead of choosing one of the we are going to choose one of the other, but let's just start. Let's just let's just focus on the presentation for a second, okay? Let's just talk about that. I mean, there's no way you could do this, right? You should, or no way that you should do this. Let me say this: you definitely could. There's no way you should. No way, zero percent, because. You're gonna drive yourself. You're gonna go. You're gonna jump off a cliff. <laughs> you don't want to do this because I'm telling you right now. If, if it if it becomes when you're putting something together like this, and by the way, as you know, when you start your 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 own business here and you've done it before, there's gonna be a lot of non sexy things that you're gonna do, right? Oh, yeah. There's gonna be a lot of like just crap behind the scenes. There's gonna be fires. There's gonna be stuff that goes wrong, etc. And even if you're just kind of lukewarm on that subject matter and who you want to serve, it's going to go down the toilet. It's just not even worth considering it. Even if it's the the richest, most expensive market on the planet, if that's not your thing, I'm telling you right now, it you're you're it's just a waste of time to be dealing with that. Okay. 
I mean, I, I, because the thing is, it, that's probably one of the big reasons you're not staying motivated with it is because you know that this just isn't quite like this isn't quite your thing. No, I and besides giving a lot of presentations, I've sat through thousands of them and some and, and most of them terrible. And I think sometimes what was pushing me in this direction was I had to pet peeve about how terrible some of the presentations were. I was hearing it's like, boy, I could teach people how to do this better. But I just wonder after I would take that person aside and say, here, do this, this and this next time, you know, the fire would be out and I wouldn't care anymore. <laughs> if right. that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I, and I think, you know, you really, so here's the thing you got to think about this way. Not that there isn't enough pieces of the pie to go around. Right. But let's just look at, let's call it the presentation industry. Right. There's someone sitting there right now that lives and breathes presentations. They love it. They wake up in the morning and they think about presentations. They close their eyes at nights. They think about presentations. They've read every book of presentations. They're obsessed with presentations. People walk in their house. They won't shut up about presentations, <laughs> right? That's the type of person that's going to be successful with that topic and in industry because that's their living, breathing. That's like what they love. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And it's that is not what you described is totally not me. Right. Like you wake up and you're like, oh, you know what? Let's talk about how we can do some presentations today. It's, it's it seems like more it's like it's something that you're good at. That's also kind of a necessary evil. That's a great way of saying it. It's it's an occupational hazard, really. And I, I'm fortunate. I mean, I'm blessed that I can do it. But it's not like you said, it's not something that's something I get up in the morning. And that's first thing I think about with my cereal. You know? Right. And, and also, by the way, a couple of things. I mean, just because you're good at something also doesn't mean that that would be the great topic for your course. Do you know what I mean? Like there's plenty of stuff I'm probably good at that just wouldn't be great for a course because I'm just not that into it. I just, I, I just happen to be OK at it. Right. And the other thing, too, is – if you're thinking, well, you know, and, and someone might be listening to this as well and saying, well, I don't really have like an undying or a crazy passion for anything necessarily right now. Do you know what I mean? Some people might be thinking that like, you know, I don't live and breathe some a, a certain topic. Well, the thing is, if you have a baseline love for it and it comes easily to you and you want to serve and help people, that passion could also develop greatly over time. Right. So, right. for example, yeah. for me, just to just quickly share, Scott, like, I didn't come out of the womb thinking about online courses, <laughs> right? If you'd have told me this in 2008, I would have been like, you were out of your effing mind. Like if someone's like, you're going to be teaching, by the way, starting in 2013, your business is going to be about teaching people how to create courses and digital products and programs. I'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about, right? But what happened is I became good at it and loved it. And when other people started asking me questions about it, it, it made me happy to teach them about it. Right. I was like excited about it. like, this is so cool. Check this out. You can do this, this and that. Then we started getting students results. We started doing this and that. And then it developed into, you know, my business and a, and a big passion as well. Right. I don't want people just to think like, well, I don't live and breathe anything right now. That's OK. Right. Right. Well, I think I think it depends how long you've, you've lived and how many things you've tried. But eventually you find something that when like with teaching and I don't know if you've had this experience, but I do when I teach somebody something and I see the lights go on in their head. That's where the joy is. That's where the satisfaction is. You have helped make somebody better. That's yeah, that's, that's exactly that's exactly true. I mean, because, you know, that's what it's at the end of the day. That's what this is all about is helping people get results. And when you start doing that, it's like jet fuel. Like once you start seeing people that following your system and taking your teachings and making a difference in their lives, whatever that difference is, right? That's right. what makes a difference. So now let's talk about this other subject that we have. Okay. Cause I think we could just literally cross presentations off the board. God bless them and goodbye. <laughs> okay. I just don't, it's just not the move for you because I, I tell you, it's just not the move for you at all. Because what you're already telling me about your music part is that when you were writing the outline, it was super easy. You loved kind of talking about it. You, what you're just worried about here is the market, right? Yes, primarily. So let's talk about, first of all, what is this specific subject when it comes to music? Can you kind of narrow it down? What do we talk about here? Oh, absolutely. Do you play anything yourself? Not well. I played the recorder in middle school. I was not good at all. And now I play my three and a half year old and my 16 months old instruments. So that's my skill level. It's very okay. low. All right. And, and yet, if I was in your place and you had something with black and white keys on it, I could show you, I could get you to play probably in 30 minutes, 
and you in a week you'd be you'd be good enough to play with somebody else in a band right that's this kind of thing i'm talking if you had the motivation right so here's here's the thing with keyboards there's basically two ways you go there's piano Everybody knows what that is, and it's very clear in everyone's head. Everyone's got a picture of a piano in their head. But keyboards is, is a little less clear. So when I say keyboard, what I mean is synthesizer-based music, all right? So not acoustic piano, everything else but that, right? Whether it's rock and roll anymore or it's a worship band, church type of situation, the keyboardist is usually playing off of his computer. He's got like a MIDI keyboard hooked up to, and I can explain that if you want, hooked up to a laptop with no, some software yeah. and, okay. and he's making sounds that are everything but the piano sound usually, right? It's very difficult for people to pick up. You don't come out of the womb knowing that <laughs> either. And where, where I notice there's a lot of trouble is someone's in there, in there, let's just, I'm going to use the church setting because that's the one I'm most familiar with. There's a piano player there for like 10 years. They've classically trained the piano. And then someone comes and says, Hey, we need you to play the keyboards. And they have no earthly idea where to start. It's a different style of playing. You are not the center of attention anymore. You're part of the band. So it's that pizza pie you were talking about. There's a musical pizza. There's only one slice for you, right? And playing keyboards is like this. Take a jar, put the big rocks in it. That's the other members of the band. Pour sand around it. That's you at the keyboard. You're holding everything together. You're the platform on which everything else sits, right? There's a very particular way you go about playing that you know, with your fingers and how you think about doing it. And there's a very particular way you go about creating the sounds so that you're not strident, you're not sticking out, you're building, you're providing a platform for other people to do their thing off of in the, in the musical situation. So there's a technique to playing. So that's one thing. Like, I'll just read you through what, what I had here. I have my little outline your darn keyboard okay, thing here. Perfect. So it's, you know, first thing you got to do is learn how to play chords. Then you got to know how to set up your gear. Then you know how to you have to choose the right sounds. Then you got to practice, and then you got to set up for Sunday morning or whenever the performance is. It's that simple. It's it's five. It's literally five <laughs> steps. Now here's a question too: Who is kind of the target market for this? The primary target market would be someone who already knows how to play piano, even just a little bit. Okay. You don't have to have four years at Juilliard and nothing like that. Now, having said that, if you can count to four. And you know the letters A through G, or yeah, it's A, B, C, D, F, G. Yeah, I can teach you. But it helps if you're – the ideal person is someone who's played piano for a couple of years. Okay. So, 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 so ideal customer is someone that they got a little piano going, a little bit of experience with the keys, but they want to learn how to play this – what do we call it? Electric – what's we'll it call called? It, just, just call it keyboards. They want to learn how to play keyboards. So they want to go from kind of piano to keyboards. Okay, got it. Now, could this person also be, or is this a completely different market? Could this person just be someone that wants to play keyboard but doesn't know anything about it? Absolutely. Okay, so because I see both there, because I, I don't see it. You know, we always talk about niching down, right? As we talk about, and what's interesting is that you're already down to a good niche there with a specific instrument. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Like, I wouldn't want to go too much further. I wouldn't want to say that this is playing this instrument for left-handed people in Iowa, right? <laughs> like, I wouldn't want to go too much because I feel like there's people that are trying to figure out how to learn how to play this right now, and you need to be the solution for them, right? Mm -hmm. Now, tell me this. And this is going to be a big question because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smash your answer to it. I already know. Is you're worried that there's not going to be a market for this. Why, why do you worry about that? What's, what, 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 what's been kind of your, your thought process on that? Well, so it's, it's got a couple of threads to it. One thread is how many people out there are possibly in this position or who, 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 who that, well, we just identified who the target market is. I, I wonder myself, how many people are there actually like that out there? One. And of the ones that I've run into, and of course I might've run into like less than 0.0001% of them in the world, but the ones that I've run into are like, Oh, well, I can get this for free on YouTube. I'm like, well, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> all right. So there's the Udemy's of the world. There's YouTube and I don't know what else. There's membership sites out there. I just feel like people have been de desensitized to, <laughs> shall we say, value-based pricing. Well, first of all, by the way, I just I just Googled just for my own entertainment. This might not be the right search, but I just did it anyway. I typed in how to play keyboard, right, on Google, which is very broad. Obviously, but I got one point. Wait, one. 
what is this? One, don't tell me it's billion. Is it really? Uh, Yo, <laughs> one billion, 40 million results. Okay? I just want to note that. That's what came up. There's, it's one zero four zero 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 zero. Okay? <laughs> now, you think some of these people might not be interested in taking a next step with someone that knows what the heck they're talking about and paying for it? Well, <laughs> I guess I don't know what I don't know, right? I, I'm just, you know, I'm sure I know it was probably premature to get into price points, but I keep, I keep thinking, you know, well, you, you always said go for the premium, premium end of the market. And I'm just, I, I guess I was too unsettled not knowing, well, what does that mean in this context? Well, that's going to take a little research, but here's the thing. Keep this in mind. So one of my, if you, if you've heard me at all talk like, just candidly about stuff. One of my big crazy passions is slow pitch softball. Okay. Oh yeah. It's ridiculous. Heard that, yeah. I love it. The amount of bats that are to my right right now are absurd. Okay. It's close to my wife's purse collection. It's not good. All right. I'm super <laughs> into slow pitch softball. Right now, I'm always slow. It's it's my golf, if you will. Now, for me, I'm a always looking to improve. I'm looking to improve my swing. I'm looking to improve, you know, my skill level, things like that. Now I've watched plenty of free YouTube videos about slow pitch softball. Okay. However, there was one that I ran into where I, re- I really liked the guy and guess what? He had a premium program on slow pitch softball. They actually have distance lessons that you can do. They've got programs. They got all this kind of cool stuff. And guess what? I didn't give a crap how much it was. I wanted to buy it. Right? Because I'm at the market and there's people like me in every market out there, okay, where they find a hobby or something that they're into and they're willing to pay for help. There's also plenty of people that just want to watch a free YouTube video. But we already know that a free YouTube video is very different than a course or kind of a course coaching hybrid type of program, right? Because you're not getting, say, direct feedback. I mean, for example, you could do something where, you know, people could record themselves and send it into a Facebook group, something like that, right? You, you're not getting it all in one trusted learning environment, i.e. on a website that walks you through a system, right? Because if you go on YouTube and you start searching for how to play keyboard, you're going to find stuff like how to play the keyboard, how to play the piano keyboard for very beginners lesson one. I'm, I'm just searching right now. Things like that. You're not going to get a complete step-by-step system to really walk you through plus support. Because at the end of the day, a course is not just about content. It's about what support and things that you give people to help them take them to the next level. Well, and that's kind of – and that comes along so naturally with this because I, I rattled through the through the, the the outline there. That that business about setting up your gear, meaning oh, yeah. how do you get – Huge. That, that, that that's never ends. <laughs> I mean that's – it's like the bat hit you've got right next to you. I mean you can always get another one, right? And there's always something special about that one and you use it a different way than another one. That same thing is true in this world. So it is evergreen and from that perspective for there's, sure. There's people willing to spend money to save time – and stress in mm-hmm. pretty much every industry. I mean, like, and, and it's amazing because it, it's, it's just so true. Like I'm, I'm that person because by the way, there's certain things I just don't care about. So of course I'm not going to spend money on it. Right. But there's plenty of things that I'm oh like, God, you know, this would really help me if I could do it. Example, when I was bringing back my podcast or even the first version of my podcast back in the day, once I got away from kind of just plugging in a microphone, right? I want to get a little fancier with like my setup and things like that. Well, there was a guy, the podcast answer man, Cliff Ravenscraft. Okay. And he would literally, I bought equipment from him and then literally he would show me videos on exactly how to set it up. Okay. Now realize that I could Google that or go on to YouTube and be searching around how to set up podcast equipment. But next thing you know, it's mass confusion. There's Everyone's got a different setup. There's all these different things. What a lot of times people do is they look for a trusted expert and say, you know what? I just want this guy or this girl to tell me what to do. You know, you mentioned him. I've used him as well. So yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I paid for exactly the same reason. See? And, and, and so that's the thing. Now, another thing I want to bring up here, are you familiar with another Create Awesome Online Courses student named Michelle Anderson? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. So this is very important to understand. So Michelle Anderson, and I'll give you her link here in a second. I'm going to bring up her website. So Michelle, definitely someone to talk to as well. Michelle teaches adults how to play clarinet. Okay. Okay. That's it. It's clarinetmentors.com. Clarinetmentors.com. She's a great awesome online course student. Her course is in that 
high five figures, possibly even now crossing into six figures. Clarinet mentors. We're talking about teaching adults how to play clarinet. Not kids, adults. <laughs> and you will notice That's- here that if you go on her site, you're going to see lots of interesting things. She's got an ebook. She's got free clarinet video and lessons. I'm just looking at it right now. And she might be making some updates to the site. That's why the, not everything's necessarily clickable. She's got stuff on just how to improve high notes and tone. She's got courses. There's things like that as well. My point is she has built quite a, a solid brand around clarinet lessons. Yes. Wow. It's not, it, I, I'm looking at it now. I see what you mean. Yeah. And, yeah. and, she, and she's a COC student and she's got a couple different you – know, she's been at it for a little while now. So she's kind of expanded to several courses. I think she also has like kind of a kind of a coaching membership program as well, a couple different things. But my point is that this entire – I mean we could go on Google and search for clarinet lessons. We could go on YouTube and search for clarinet lessons. But look how she's positioned herself here, right? And, and, and this is a business that is legit making money. I mean her first launch – I have to go back and find the graphic. I have it on Instagram. I think it was like $40,000 or something like that. She's done a really good job with it on a topic that's not dissimilar from what you're interested in. Yeah, I see that. You know, I mentioned earlier somewhere, I think early on in the call, I was a programmer. You know, I, I'm looking at her site and it just reminds me that I, I wrote an iPad app, gosh, back in 2010, which is still out in the store. That helps with the whole sheet music problem that adults have because <laughs> you can't memorize. Well, it's not just adults that have that issue, but takes care of the sheet music for you on a – during our performance oh, so as you already well. Have, you already have something in that industry out there. I do. Which is yeah. just adds to credibility and kind of, hey, you're the guy that created it. It's an app, right? Yeah, it is. It, it's been in the store since 2010, I want to say. Oh, yeah. I love I mean, we are, we're hitting the jackpot here. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You got to feel it. Do you feel, do you feel <laughs> though, that this could be a possibility for you? I'm getting there. <laughs> All right. You're getting there. Now, now, let me just, by the way, this, here's an update from Michelle. This was on in 2017. Okay. And this was an update from her. And I just want to give you the context here, right? In 2015, she did 32,000 in sales with her course. Okay. Then from 2015 to 2016, she went from 32,000 to 75,000. Okay. Then she added in more. And this was an update in 2017 that she was on track in 2017 to smash into six figures. And then I have to get, we should go now get an update from her in 2018 as we wrap up 2018 as where she's at now. But I'm showing you that that's an example of, you know, what could be done in an industry like this, you know? Yeah, I see some very, some very clear parallels here as I'm just clicking through her nav, the resources and the worksheets and then and the other things she's got there. And here's another thought. Here's another thought too. What could you offer in your course that would be different or something that, YouTube can't people can't do. Mm-hmm. Something to think about. Right. Now I, I you know a couple of things just start coming to mind while I'm sitting here. Most of the keyboard videos that I've ever looked at on YouTube, there's too much talking and not enough learning going on, not enough teaching going on. And by the way, that's and that's something to point out. Do you know what I mean too? Like like always, you know, it's kind of the pick an enemy type of thing. Right? It's like, hey, you might have you might have seen a lot of videos where there's a ton of talking. I'm just gonna say hi and now we're gonna go play some crap. Right. Well, and you know, I I've got a face for radio, so you don't wanna see too much of me in a YouTube video anyway. <laughs> well, I disagree with that. I disagree with that because <laughs> let, let's just say let's just say I mean, not that, you know, obviously you're a male model, right? We just we're just obviously but I'm saying that, you know, it's one of those things too. I mean, people are, are looking for people like them to a certain degree in terms of teaching as well. I mean, you know what I mean? Do we want to le- learn from Rihanna? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool, but you know what I mean? You know, so what, what I mean by that is that like, and what I mean by when you, when you're putting del- your deliverables together, something to think about is, and first of all, by the way, there's definitely a market for this. I can tell you that I'm not, a, I don't know, a key, like I said, I don't know a keyboard from a shmi board, but I can tell you right now in two minutes of research, I can tell you there's a market for it. And the key is going to be finding those people that are willing to pay for it, right? Okay, and the way right. that you di- differentiate in people that are not willing to pay for it or willing to pay for it is by what your actual offering is and how you're going to save them time, money, stress, right? And so when you put your package together, this is what I'm kind of getting at, is that you have to say, well, listen, you could go on YouTube and search for this, but who knows who this person is? It could be a nine-year-old prodigy or it could be you know, someone's doing this and that. What I offer you is not only training, but X, X, and X, 
right? And X might be, and, I, and again, I'm, I'm literally spitballing here, so this is not, you know what I mean? You have to go back and kind of process this, right? X might be like, you know, every week I do a live lesson on Facebook. Do you know what I mean? X might be every week you can send in something to be reviewed by us. And it just might be a more premium thing. Do you know what I mean? So you might want to go for less customers at a higher price point, you know? Yeah, I mean, the, the, something that just immediately comes to mind is there's the whole musical aspect of this, and that's one thing. But with the keyboards, what makes it different from piano, as we said earlier, was the whole tech aspect. And that's what scares people away from even giving it a try. Oh, I could never do that in quote unquote computer thing. I can totally make that graspable by anyone who's willing. So right. that, oh, that would sure. be- and you have a tech package. You have a tech thing that you yeah. can, yeah, you can learn it. Hey, listen, because you know, Cliff did a great job of that with podcasting, right? What, oh, what yeah. happened is you would buy the equipment for people that don't know, you'd buy the equipment from Cliff and I'm not saying you have to sell equipment, but I'm saying that you buy the equipment from Cliff and it was literally like him on video saying like, all right, you're going to take this cord and you're going to plug it into this hole right here. Not that hole, this hole. And I'm sitting here like a monkey because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Right. And I was able to get the whole thing up. I was super proud of myself. And I mean, there's no way I would be able to do that by myself. Do you know well, I mean? and he, yeah, and he would do other things like say, twist this knob until that dial says between negative six yes. and negative 12. Right. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm twist. Right. It's like, you don't even need to know why necessarily just do it. Right. <laughs> and it sounds great. <laughs> right. Like a lot of people just want like, I'm the same way. Like that's my personality. So meaning, you know, and again, I'm not necessarily your target customer, but I am your target customer in terms of the type of person it might not be my personality, but it's going to be someone that's like, I really want to do this and I'm willing to pay to relieve any stress, time, energy. And I want my damn stuff set up now. Do you know what I mean? And I don't really care how it works. I just want it set up so that I can sit here and I can hit my keys, right? There's a market for that. That That's a high end premium market that people are interested in. In this thing now, question two for you, Scott: Is this something where you could also spend time, like a little bit, on coaching too, or do you want it like purely automated? Well, I guess it depends how we would want to deliver that. If if it's like through like a Facebook group, I guess I could try that. I don't know how it would scale. I would have to see how many questions I actually got, but I'd have to do it on a platform like that rather than one on one over Skype or something. That yeah, would yeah, you don't much. want to be doing that. But I'm, you know, it might be something where, and I'm just again, I'm spitballing. I'm trying to think what people may or may not want. Right? Mm-hmm. Is you, is something, or it could be that hey, you could submit a song for review once you learn it or something like that. So it gives people incentive to get through the course. Yeah, I think people – well, so so I think the closest example just off the cuff here is when you're going to play a song like this, <laughs> there's more than one way to play the same song. And is this way a best way if someone's going to sing with you? You know, So that kind of critiquing, yeah, I can see something like that being a thing. Now, now what, are, what are your fears about doing this? You, you've got me comfortable up until – I'm at the last one. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's why I'm asking the question because I, 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 can, I can sense a little hesitation. So I want, I want to make sure that you're comfortable with it. The, the swamp is drained except for one nagging item. OK. Getting a list put together. How do I reach these people? Oh, yeah. I mean so first of all, I think this is going to be far easier than you think. And I think an ebook might not might not be the best vehicle. OK. Because I feel like – here, here's why. I feel like you have to speak to this person that's going to be willing to pay for help. Okay. Right? And the way that you, you do that is that you speak to someone that doesn't probably have a ton of time or want to deal with like reading a 200-page ebook. Does that make sense? It's exactly be- right. Because they're thinking like, you know what? Like, you imagine if I was like, hey, Cliff, I need help with a podcast. He's like, here's a 200-page ebook. I'm like, okay, delete <laughs> yeah, right? I'm going to move on to someone. I just need someone to show me what to do. Right. Yep, me so, too. so you need to kind of, but you know what? You address that head on. Does that make sense? So like, like before we even talk about list building, your copy has to talk about the things that we're talking about here. So I'm meaning saying like, listen, like just hit it right in the head. I know there's plenty of free tutorials out there. I know there's this and that, but guess what? I'm going to show you how to learn it faster and I'm going to show you how to learn it with less stress and cut through the noise and do it better or whatever it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just be like, just take that head on, like acknowledge that there's other stuff out there, but guess what? You've got a system that's for people 
that want to take this seriously and learn how to do it fast or whatever it is or better. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. not to say fast, but but better, right? And you don't want to deal with the tech stress and you don't want to deal with the tech headaches or things like that. And then here's what you got to think about. This might take some research. You might not be able to answer it here today. Of these people that are willing to pay, and we're talking about, again, you got to keep in mind, premium people. If this is you and you and you wanted to learn how to do this, and this is going to be like a killer hobby for you, and you would do whatever it takes, right? Think about all the golf lessons that go on around the world, high-end golf <laughs> lessons. I mean, these people are not playing on the freaking pro tour, right? 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 It's like my grandpa, who's 90, right, took lessons up to probably a few years ago until his health kind of declined a little bit, right? So, and, you know, I don't think he was trying out to go play against Tiger Woods, right? It's because he did it because he enjoyed it, right? So... What I would think about, what do you think? And you might know this and you might not. You might have to research. You might have to find some phone a friend, whatever it is. What do you think the biggest fear or thing is that's going to hold people back from getting started with it? Getting started with taking the course or just actually wanting to play? Uh, I, I think you're going to want to find people that do want to play and they're looking for the fastest solution and best solution to play. So I don't think you need to sell people on like, here's a keyboard and this is why you want to play it. I think it's you, the customer that you're going to want. They already know they want to do this. They just like have to figure out, you know, how. Well, I think I think they fear the complexity. That would be my my first guess off the cuff because I know when when I started myself, it was a big uphill battle because there was no clean, well lit place in the internet you could go to figure out how to do this. Okay, and that's and that's what you start harping, right? You start saying like, look, like you want to do this, but there's noise out there. How the heck do you get started? Is the tech going to be difficult? Right, that kind of thing. What I'm thinking is your giveaway here has to address those type of things, right? Like if you if you thought, you know, like the easier, simpler way of doing things, right? That's that's kind of what you want to harp home. And, you know, maybe it's, it's I'm mean, going to, again, spitball here. Maybe it's a tech guide. Maybe it's a, it's a resource guide of explaining like the better way of doing this versus the noise that's out there, right? Like a very short ebook type of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. A couple pages. All right, so... That would be like a so so lead, the lead magnet site type of thing. But how how do I actually get that out in front of people is what I'm wondering. Yeah. So I think I think your strategies here. And by the way, we're gonna have a ton added to CAOC coming soon on list building. By the way, even more than it's in there now. Like right now, inside of Create Awesome Online Courses, there's a ton on list building and list of Palooza. We're gonna have like double to triple that in 2019, which is going to be awesome, by the way. Fun fact. You know, because what kind of complicates things for me a little bit is, you know, I have a LinkedIn profile that has to do with my day job, and I really can't, like, LinkedIn was a strategy That's okay. with the I can't really go there. No, LinkedIn's you know, not so. going to be the move. You know, I do think that YouTube will be the move, even though it's crowded, okay? I do think that Facebook is potentially the move as well because it's different than... YouTube, but there's still a ton of video views on Facebook as well. So, I mean, we're talking about, you know, is this something that you could do a Facebook live video on potentially? Do you know what I mean? Because what I think it comes down to is you're going to have one really nice giveaway. I view it almost as a report or a first lesson or a, so you, the, the entire goal of your giveaway is basically to alleviate a fear or make something easier for people and know that you're in their corner. Okay. Right. So the first thing you want is is some kind of giveaway because the reason is everyone wants traffic. But if we're not coming up with something really cool to give away that people care about or to bring them to the next level, we're just wasting our time with traffic anyway. Right. Right. Now I'm I'm feeling really I sort of there's like a weight rolling off of me here. I'm, I'm, I'm the last part of the weight though is is the one we're talking about right now. Is this is you know is Facebook going to be the right vector or something? Else? You know I I heard some of the other podcasts where you you've emphasized. Pick one thing, and and other people, and your guests have said, pick one way and, and get or one, one or two. Yeah, and, yeah, maximum two. I my my rule on traffic is it's two max to start, right? To right. at least get to at least get to five hundred to a thousand people. Once once you go beyond there, then we can maybe experiment and go from there. But five hundred to a thousand people is like that first grind of okay, what are the ways you're going to do it, right? But go ahead, continue with that. No, what I was going to say is this, the Facebook angle that you were pursuing here, is that something we're, you're going to flesh out more in CAOC or? Yeah, so we're going to be adding a, well, here's, here's a fun fact. This is kind of a spoiler alert. Hopefully we don't change our strategy on this because I'm saying it now live on a podcast. So, you know, <laughs> you don't hold me to this, but we're working on a new course 
that's kind of like list building on steroids that is going to be actually then incorporated into CAOC as well with Listapalooza. And it's going to probably have about 15 more traffic strategies in it, ranging from Pinterest to YouTube to actually several different ways of doing YouTube, a new Facebook ad strategy. A lot of this kind of stuff is going to be inside of CAOC. Right. Well, I ask. I mean, I ask that because I have a little bit of knowledge about Facebook ads, and that's it. I've never actually done really anything with them. Well, I mean, I would say, you know, if, do you feel comfortable spending a little bit on Facebook ads? Yeah. I mean, I think that that would be, you know, you know, figuring out the targeting on this would be interesting as well, because you'd have to go in there and kind of search for, you know, keyboard related things and things like that as well. But that's why this giveaway has got to be really good, right? In terms of what you're going to do and s- stick out from the pack. I don't see a lot of people doing ads on keyboard keyboard lessons. Do you? No, not really. I mean, that's a good thing. Not what I'm talking about, anyway. <laughs> it's not like it's not like talking about marketing funnels, right? If you if it, you know how many people have ads on marketing funnels, it's probably seventy thousand people with ads on marketing funnels, right? I shoot myself, right? But this, you know, and there's a great new Facebook ad or not new, I wouldn't call it, but updated. Let's just call it Facebook ad strategy that we're going to be putting up with Tamiko Kelly, who's a great awesome online courses student who teaches baby sleep training. Right. And that's going to be going up as well. It's this really simple one. I think it's like 10 bucks a day where you do this really simple strategy. But I think for you, it's going to be creating this really cool giveaway that's going to be centered towards, you know, a keyboard, someone that wants to learn how to do keyboard that wants to skip through all the noise. Right. And get started with it. And then it's going to be starting with ads. And I think I think that's going to that's going to be the way that you're going to do it because like you said you're not scared of Facebook ads per se. You know a little bit about them. I think that's going to be the, the the first thing that you could think about. Okay. Weight is rolling off. <laughs> I mean I think yeah because if you if you really think about this, you've got your subject matter at least to think about. You've got your subject matter. You know how we kind of talk about who your who your audience is, right? Now, basically, you're going to have to go do the work on is figure out the way to speak to that audience, right? And give them what they want. And then it's going to be creating a course and a program around it. And I think, you know, using things like Facebook to leverage it okay. are, are just going to be awesome. I mean, I think I think this yeah. is this is this is great, at least give you some things to think about. I, I, as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm you can't see me smacking my head. But so that app I was telling you about in that app, I have a a place for people to sign up for news and updates on the app, right? Well, I just looked at MailChimp while we're sitting here talking. There's like 454 people on that list. Oh, really? (laughs) So I don't have zero, right? Now, they're not all keyboard players, but it's more than – there's got to be some in there. Listen, we're we're, going to switch the name of this conversation to a coaching session where we found 400 – how many was it? 54. 54 people in less than an hour, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's the kind of thing too is pay attention to your real estate. Do you know what I'm saying? And have that kind of stuff out there. And this is going to also be, you know, you don't even need a full-fledged website. You can start with a really good landing page. Do you know what I mean? That you're going to be driving people towards. And that that's going to kind of be basically the beginning of all this. Okay. No, this is good. Um, I feel a whole lot better, David. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I love it. And I know, and it, listen, I get it that it's scary. I get it that, you know, it's not, it might not be 100% solved today. I get it that it's going to be a process. I get that things are going to go wrong. There's going to be doubts that come in. But I think what I've shared today from experience at least can have you thinking about going in, the, in that direction. Yeah, I'll have to think about, you know, where to, where to, eventually where to price it. But that, that can, Come later on. Let's let's focus on finding your tribe and finding your people yep. and finding these keyboard people. Because I guarantee you, there's people that have also tried to learn off of YouTube or other videos and have failed, right? And gotten confused or whatever it might be. There's definitely going to be a market for it. I can tell you that without a doubt. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. All right, Scott. Well, I think we have covered a lot today. It was funny because I got this email from you and I was like, should I just respond to Scott and say, you know what you should do? is the music and then just like leave it at that and i was like or you can come on the podcast and we can talk about this in extreme detail so i decided (laughs) not to sell you that easy thing that i saw like kind of what stuck out to me but instead like let's talk it through and look at the whole shape this i hope you enjoyed kind of this process to learn probably you know more about this more about yourself more about what you want no, I totally appreciate it because it's kind of one thing to maybe intellectually kind of know what the right answer is, but it's another thing to walk through the steps and actually become a believer in the right answer. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and I think what you've you've done here, I'll leave the, the kind of the final thought too, is that 
the success that I see with my most successful students, who we try to emulate in our business moving forward also even in more specifically, is sticking with that very specific subject matter. Like that's the key. Like you're going to start living and breathing being the keyboard dude, right? Like that's right. going to be your oh, thing. Yeah. And you already have the track record with it, et cetera. And that's where people struggle in this industry is they, they're scared to pick a lane. They say, they say, oh, I'm multi-passionate or I don't want to just do one thing over the next few years. And what ends up happening is nothing good, right? The people that are willing to make the, I don't want to even say sacrifice because that's not the right word, commitment, commitment to saying, okay, this is my subject matter. This is what I'm going to focus on are the ones that have success. And we've seen this time and time again with all kinds of students. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Scott. Well, good luck with everything. I'm excited. All right. I love it, man. Listen, if I can get an IT guy to excite, get some excitement and laughter, I'm happy. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we're too serious. Exactly. Yeah. So good luck with everything. You've got this. And you know, reach out anytime as well if you need any further help. All right. Will do. All right. Good luck. And we'll, we'll, we'll have an update at some point. All right. Okay. Thank you, David. Thanks, Scott. Okay. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that episode with Scott. I think he's got, you know, amazing horizon things. What's horizon? Amazing things on the horizon coming up here. And a lot of times it just takes, you know, talking through it with someone saying, you know, this is what I'm thinking. And what do you think? And it, it, it's as much advice as it is also just kind of self introspection and like saying like, this is what I really want to do. You can see that Scott made some breakthroughs through here. He was still nervous, still worried about where he's going, but he's got a lot better idea of where to go. So on the way out, a couple links for you. Number one, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, come on now, what are you doing? Subscribe up at the rise com slash subscribe. Now, if you want to learn more, about my number one program that Scott and over 5,000 students are in, Create Awesome Online Courses. A great place to start checking that out is at createawesomeonlinecourses.com. A lot of cool stuff there, free training, other good doodads. Make sure to nab it. All right, I will see you next time, my friends. It's been David Sattler Garland here on the Rise Stop Podcast. And remember, if you want some fluff, you know what to do. Go pet a bunny. I'm a beaver. I listen to daddy. I want to rise to the top. Bye-bye.